Okay. I've been meaning to do this for some time, but uh, people would ask me why I hadn't made a video on the photoelectric bef effect before. It's like, well, I've gone over it in uh, decent detail in my book, the third edition. Of course, it's going to be expanded upon. And people always ask about the photoelectric effect. Uh, by the way, a few of you actually acquired this, my buddy uh, Tim's invention. You notice it's not plugged in right now. And uh, I wish you could see this, since you're not here to actually see the deep photographic depth of the ferro cell. But, you know, imagine a device that doesn't require any power. You could use sunlight. I just don't have any sunlight in here right now. So even without it plugged in, you're actually able to see the centrifugal divergence and convergence on the ferro cell. It's uh, extremely sensitive. So, fascinating little device. Um, wanted to go over the photoelectric effect. Obviously so. Um, supposedly this is Einstein's discovery, and that's certainly not the case. This isn't my opinion, it's a hardcore fact. Um, it is the case that in 1887, Heinrich Hertz observed uh, the photoelectric effect in the production of uh, electromagnetic waves. And uh, response, he'd actually notice sparks uh, when he would uh, uh, drop um, ultraviolet light into... Uh, um, to uh, cathodes and anodes, so uh, Einstein never discovered this. In 1899, J.J. Thompson investigated ultraviolet light in Crookes tubes, and Thompson deduced that uh, the ejection charges were the same as those uh, previously found in the cathode ray. Tesla knew what this was. This was electrostatic buildup, and it, that's exactly what it is at the interatomic level. Now, there are many things that disprove Einstein's explanation of the photoelectric effect. So, Einstein never discovered the photoelectric effect. He never uh, explained the, photograph uh, the photoelectric effect. And that for which he won a Nobel Prize is complete nonsense. Let's go over that. Um, it is the case that uh, it was discovered that uh, higher uh, ED voltages of uh, blue spectrum light, uh, there is a threshold frequency of uh, electromagnetic uh, or coaxial uh, uh, EM uh, emissions that uh, cause the, uh, the release of uh, electrostatics between a uh, cathode and an anode in a vacuum tube. Now, everything in the universe is based upon co uh, resistance, capacitance, permeability and permittivity. Permittivity being directly relevant to dielectricity and permeability relating to magnetic permeability. Uh, the shorter wavelength the light uh, penetrates the copper, etc. plates and overcomes its natural dielectric permittivity. This is called the threshold frequency at which electrostatic charge is generated and uh, released. Um, it is a case that human beings, we don't really understand something and that something is incredibly important. We understand physical geometry, but we don't understand field geometry. Even uh, extremely intelligent, not wise, I said intelligent, people don't understand it. Field geometry, it is the case, this applies to capacitors and everything else, that the smaller the volume, the higher the capacitance. This is reciprocal, of course, with the wavelength of the frequency of the light. Higher energy discharges have a very small coaxial volume in frequency. And they have, like in the visible uh, spectrum, for example, you're looking at uh, like 1.7 EV volts versus uh, right at uh, 3 EV volts uh, towards the uh, ultraviolet. So at infrared, we have 1.7 roughly, and uh, towards the ultraviolet, we basically have twice as much. Yet we have a lot less volume. Now, uh, it is the case that whether it's uh, a circular polarization or, uh, or uh, linear polarization, electromagnetic uh, pulse rarefactions, or these are actually pulse perturbations as I've called them, have a nature that's exactly like an atom. The uh, smaller the volume, the higher the capacitance. It is the case that actually, uh, like an uh, interatomic uh, uh, radius in uh, micrometers is a lot larger on uh, like sodium atoms and whatnot versus like uranium, lead and whatnot. These uh, have a much higher atomic weight, but they have much, much smaller atomic volume. Light works the same way, and this is also one of many reasons, and I'll get to the other one, why Einstein's explanation of the photoelectric effect is total bullshit. Um, so Einstein neither discovered the photoelectric effect, nor did he accurately explain the same. Hertz discovered it, Tesla explained it, you can actually go over Tesla's 
uh, comments on uh, Tesla all the time talks about frequency and wavelength. You can download the book called Tesla Said. Everything actually Nikola Tesla said. So it's just classical electromagnetic theory, but classical electromagnetic theory didn't have the full explanation for explaining the photoelectric effect, which was already a known entity by the time uh, Hertz and Thompson were around, long before Einstein ever said anything about it. Um, light is a pulse perturbation, and light is a coaxial circuit. Rarefactions and compressions in the medium, i.e. inertia or ether. The very term duality, as in this wave-particle duality that we suffer underneath, is as applied to light as being both a particle and a wave, is nothing other than a euphemism for saying ignorance. Mother Nature does not suffer dualities, okay? Mother Nature, I'm repeating myself, does not suffer, nor does she peddle dualities. There is no damn duality, there's only human ignorance. Um, about the geometry of fields. To think that light is merely an electrical and magnetic uh, transverse reciprocation, whether circular or linear, linear, linear polarization, is like thinking that uh, a car engine has pistons but no damn crankshafts. Like, hey, let's check out that new engine. It runs off of pistons, but it has no crankshaft. Well, that's, that's completely illogical. What is actually drilling into uh, the low dielectric uh, permittivity, i.e. the copper plates and the cathode and anode, i.e. the higher frequencies of light. What is drilling in there? Because light is exactly like a drill. When you're talking about uh, red spectrum radiation, there is no release of charge generated between cathode and anode. However, it is the case with blue end spectrum light that it has higher capacitance and obviously its volume, just like the volume of an atom, is much, much smaller and field geometry is that the smaller the volume, the higher the capacitance. At the high capacitance, uh, electromagnetic, or technically, as I've stated, the coaxial circuit of light towards the blue end of the spectrum, is able to drill through at the interatomic and create that capacitance for discharge, which is released between the cathode and the anode. This, you know, Mother Nature is really simple. She's just screaming her head off at us stupid, pathetic, damn humans. Um, so, you know, this notion that light is electromagnetic and, you know, that there's a duality like a wave packet or a, 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 a particle. And, you know, the, the, you know, the stupid insanity of the belief that uh, light uh, is a wave-particle duality is almost logical from the sense that if you understand what light is and it's a, is a coaxial uh, field perturbation or pro pulse perturbation, each one of those pulse perturbations is encapsulated by transverse electrical and magnetic pulses uh, coincident to either the capacitance and the frequency of the pulse perturbation of the z-axis longitudinal dielectric. And from that sense, if you're able to take out one bump in the field perturbation, you would see a transverse electrical magnetic sphere, so to say, within one uh, frequency oscillation of X spectrum of light, and at the center of which there would be that dielectric. And from that sense, light is uh, very, very, very damn closely like an atom. Okay, well that's understandable. So light is kind of like a particle. Yeah, but it's not a particle at all. It's just a pulse perturbation. Everything in the universe is fields, and fields are not particle. Now, so far as what matter is, that's a point for another discussion, but this is about the photoelectric effect. Einstein's, of the photo, Einstein's understanding of the photoelectric effect can never explain why much more uh, red in spectrum light, in other words, if you just drown the cathode or the anode or the actual uh, Crookes tube with uh, you know enormous amount of high-intensity red in spectrum light, can never approach, nor does it do anything, because it doesn't break the threshold emission, uh, to create charge from even a small amount of uh, blue end spectrum light, for example, or ultraviolet light. So that totally doesn't explain, you know, or give credence to what Einstein uh, postulated about the explanation. Remember, Einstein never discovered the photoelectric effect, and he certainly was, he was actually the fourth person to uh, to uh, talk about the explanation, or at least his belief in the explanation for the photoelectric effect. So he never discovered it, and he was the fourth person to explain it. But his explanation does not give any credence to this fact, that there is a threshold frequency. I mean, you can bombard, you know, 10,000 watts of red in spectrum uh, between, the, uh, between the cathode and anode, and there will be no release of a charge, no charge created to be thereby released. Yet a small fraction of that in the ultraviolet end of the spectrum, you know, will release uh, enormous amounts of energy. So his explanation 
You know, it's completely refuted by that. And one more thing I'll mention in a second. You know, the quantitative or quantized packet theory of Einstein can never explain that threshold frequency necessary for a charge to be created. So, it is the case that the smaller the space, the higher the capacitance is the charge only means by which the electrode charges can be created and a charge disparity to be built up between the two electrodes. You know, atomic capacitance is created when threshold frequency light is used to create a charge disparity between the electrode and interatomic magnetodielectric permeability, which is breached. You know, blue light is just like an ultra high speed drill. It's just a fine little drill. You have something here. Uh, that has a certain permeability. Let's say it's glass. You know, I can stick, and it's really tough glass. I can take a big ass drill bit, and I could uh, sit there, and uh, you know, drill on this glass forever. Let's say it, you know, it's tougher than glass. Okay, Let's say it's some sort of metal. Yeah, the volume required for it to actually tap into the inner atomic to create charge disparity, you know, is uh, it's it's too big. The volume of the red frequency light is too big. Now, blue frequency light is different. It's able to uh, penetrate the interatomic magnetodielectric volume, or the bullshit that modern, modern physics says. Well, 99.9999% of interatomic volume is just empty space. Well, no, it's not. Every atom is just an enormous uh, dielectric condensate which moves at uh, infinitesimal speeds that actually generates it, that, that entire supposed 99.999% of empty space that makes up every atom is bullshit. It's actually full, just like a balloon is full. It's like, well, saying a balloon is empty. There's nothing really in there. You got a little tiny marble inside, and, you know, the rest of it is just empty space. No, that is a magnetodielectric charge, which creates the electrostatic barrier that defines uh, interatomic volume and the boundary of that. The blue light actually penetrates that, and it creates a charge disparity, and ultimately that releases between the cathode and the anode of the electrodes in the vacuum tube. This is really very simple. Um, actually, classical uh, Maxwellian uh, field equations and electromagnetic uh, uh, understanding from, uh, from uh, Faraday, uh, Steinmetz, uh, Charles Proteus, uh, I mean, James Clerk Maxwell, and Oliver Heaviside really, uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, this explains all of that. Einstein's uh, premise can't explain that, nor can explain one other thing that I'll mention here in a second. So, photo photoconductivity or photo uh, resist uh, resistance are nothing other than interatomic dielectric permittivities. I higher EV light uh, builds up interatomic charge disparity between the cathode and anode, creates result in electrostatic charge. None of this has anything to do with non-existent photons. I mean, that's completely ridiculous. Um, there is another thing that actually disproves Einstein's explanation. There's actually several things. There's actually six different things. The first one that I've already mentioned a few times, uh, talking about, uh, you know, uh, endless amounts of uh, red light will never uh, breach the uh, frequency threshold for releasing charge. The second is a recently discovered phenomenon that which backs up everything that I've ever said about magnetism and uh, the nature of light, which of course is a coaxial circuit. Light cannot be electromagnetic. Uh, that's ridiculous. It's like saying an engine has pistons but no crankshaft. It's completely absurd. And what backs up uh, this, among countless other things, and disproves Einstein's uh, explanation for which he won the Nobel Prize, and of course, you know, he, he was an idiot. He never discovered the photoelectric effect. He never explained it. Was not the first person to explain it. And of course, his explanation is totally wrong. And that's a new phenomenon called the photomagnetic effect, which is now proving that transverse magnetic component of light is, now this isn't my premise, this is theirs, the photomagnetic effect recently discovered proves that the, uh, the uh, transverse uh, bicomponent uh, of light uh, is actually tricomponent, z-axis longitudinal dielectric and transverse electrical magnetic is 100 million times, okay, 100 million times stronger than priorly thought. Oh, gee, how do you explain that? We explain it really easy with uh, my coaxial uh, 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 theory of light, which uh, supports everything we know and all observed phenomena, proving that the correct nature of light is a coaxial circuit when, uh, for example, light is uh, passed into an insulator, i.e. dielectric glass capacitor, because glass is a capacitor, okay? You know, like when the, the, line, the power goes out on the... Uh, power lines and they bring it back on and uh, boom there's this immediate pulse of uh, current these old glass capacitors this one's from 1947 you know you see it's uh, sometimes they explode and the lines when they had to replace these they, they curse them so they had to climb up the poles and replace these damn things this one actually blew out the side of the glass it's the same reason camera lenses are uh, doped with lanthanum dioxide and, you know, they, 
they change the dielectric permeativity and uh, the magnetic permeability of the glass. That's why every lens is technically electrical circuit. This is irrefutable and it's 100, 100% unfucking deniable. Um, so this photomagnetic effect disproves Einstein's theory. It completely proves mine. This is only recently. Oh my God, we've discovered that uh, one aspect of the transverse electromagnetic component of light is 100 million times stronger than partly thought. And their explanation for that is actually incredibly simple. When the, the light is passed through a, uh, a certain dielectric medium like a glass capacitor, it retards the dielectric permittivity of the light. And what that does is it causes the loss of that inertia, i.e. the dielectric, which uh, loses the inertia as manifested in magnetism. Ultimately, the real-world applications for this is that all those solar cells that we're using right now, this, this stuff is going to make that look like dog shit by comparison. Um, the power that, uh, that can be generated is a far, far, far more enormous than we ever thought possible from light. We were harvesting what we thought was light and uh, its potential, but we were really just like eating its table scraps as far as power generation. So the photomagnetic effect is going to prove to be a, a huge boon uh, for power generation, but all of this completely supports uh, the premise of what light is. Light is not electromagnetic. It is a coaxial circuit. The explanation of the photoelectric effect was not discovered by Einstein and it was not accurately explained by Einstein. He was the fourth person to explain it. So, you know, screw Einstein. Just because he got a Nobel Peace Prize. Well, no, Einstein got a Nobel Peace Prize. No, not Peace Prize. A Nobel Prize for, uh, you know, the photo. He didn't discover it and he didn't explain it. I don't give a damn who gave him an award. It doesn't make any difference. His Nobel Prize doesn't mean shit if it's all based upon incorrect observations and incorrect theories, you know? You know, someone can be awarded a, a doctoral certificate and be out there practicing medicine and be, you know, a doctor death. It is a hardcore fact that doctors kill more people every year than cancer does. You know, it's like, well, you know, they got a certificate hanging on the wall proving that they know something. Well, that doesn't mean shit doesn't mean a, a single fucking thing any more than Einstein's Nobel Prize means he was accurate about the comprehension and the mechanics of the photoelectric effect. Um, I've said it before and it needs to be said again. You know, Mother Nature, you know, she is not a cross-eyed hooker on crack with a calculator and a bag full of magic particles. You know, the photoelectric effect is very, very simply explainable. The misapprehension of light as being particle-like and wave light is understandable because it's understandable but it's still wrong because it has a barrier where transverse electrical magnetic charge exists and it has a volume and the center of that volume that we, these, these effing idiots have been calling a photon. Photons don't exist. There's not one single fucking shred of evidence on this entire planet for a fucking photon. At the center of which is something that's kind of like the nucleus of an atom. It's like, oh god, it's like a particle. Yeah, well, it kind of behaves that way, but that's still incorrect. You know, you're kind of a little bit closer to the truth in calling it that, but Mother Nature does not deal cards, you know, in dualities. Mother Nature doesn't know what the fuck a duality is because it's bullshit. Duality just means I don't know. That's so a duality, you know. It's kind of like water is, is uh, soft when it's wet and it's, and it's hard when it's cold. That's the, that's the water duality. This shit gets hard when it gets cold and it gets uh, soft when it gets warm. That's the water duality. Ugh! Same sort of bullshit. Same bullshit. We're going to call that the water duality. You know, the wave-particle duality is no different than a retard saying that there's a water duality. Exact same shit. Human beings are not that advanced yet. We don't understand the nature of light, and we don't understand what the fuck field geometry is. So, Einstein's wrong. The coaxial uh, nature of light uh, is a given. And uh, the photomagnetic effect only recently discovered, oh my god, magnetism is 100 million times stronger in light than we previously thought. Well, shit. That's kind of important there. You hear anybody talking about the photomagnetic effect? No. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.